In this housing market, sometimes you find yourself living in some unlikely places. Some silk sharks live in a place that is slightly more challenging than a three-story walk-up with paper-thin walls. Nature has a range of biomes, which all have their challenges, but few are as inhospitable as a geothermically active area. But you know what they say, if you can't take the heat, get out of the volcano in life, death, and taxonomy. Welcome back to Life, Death, and Taxonomy. It's your 30 minutes of interesting animal information. I'm Joe. And I'm Carlos. Thank you to Cassie for the creation of our theme song. To hear more of Cassie's music, please search Cassie Michelle on YouTube or Spotify. And thank you to Johanna for the creation of this week's artwork. To check that out, you can visit us at our home on the web at ldtaxonomy.com. And a very special thank you to our patrons, Jesse Raspolich, Carol Raspolich, Richard Kaspar, Lottie, Aubrey, and Gray Hughes. Thank you so much for your support. It is greatly appreciated. Thanks for helping us keep the lights on. And today we're talking about a shark that isn't as smooth as it sounds, but it is hot, but more on that later. Hot shark. Hot piping shark. Sounds tasty. Piping hot. Uh, but what are we talking about? We're talking about the silky shark. That one definitely ha- plays smooth jazz. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. It's also known as the black spot shark, the gray whaler shark, the olive shark, the ridgeback shark, the sickle shark, the sickle silk shark. Yeah, you you don't want to ruffle a silk shark. For sure, no. Uh, It'll wrinkle. Yeah, you don't want to wrinkle a silk shark. Um, but we're going to call it here the lava lamprey and the sickthiosaur. Cool. Sickthiosaur. <laughs> Those are my nicknames. Uh, let's taxonomize this boy. Okay. Uh, it's in a kingdom you know, love, and are in. That one's Animalia. Bet you knew that one already. Uh, the phylum is Chordata. The class is Chondrichthys. Not actinopterygy, even though it is a fish. It's not a bony fish. It's a cartilaginous fish, putting it in chondrichthy. So sharks and skates and rays fall into this category. The order is, here we go. See, see, like, <laughs> now, and I, I don't know if it's a soft CH or a hard CH. We're going to go with the soft CH. Carcharhiniformes. It's got to be. Carcharhiniformes, because if there's a if it's C A R and then C H A R, they have to be different. Otherwise, why why, why have them be different? Um, the family is uh, Carcharhinidae. The genus is Carcharhinus, and the f- species is uh, Falciformes or Falciformes, probably Falciformes. So it's the binomial nomenclature is Carcharhinus Falciformes. But since we're in the business of naming things, it's time for my favorite part of the show, Nitty Gritty Nomenclature. We already know that a group of sharks is called a shiver because we've done sharks before, and that's the only collective noun for it, uh, besides maybe a school. Uh, So let's talk about what does the binomial nomenclature mean in English? This is just bringing us right back to the core of this show, which is taxonomy. What does Carcharhinus falciformis mean in English? Does it mean A. Speedy, smooth raptor horn B. Sharp, sickle-shaped shark Try saying that five times fast C. Bird-like gray skin Or D. Silk Skin sickle. Goodness, I didn't realize how hard this would be to say. I typed it all out. <laughs> um, D, silk skin sickle, final answer. 
That is incorrect, but close to the answer, because the real answer is B. Sharp sickle shapes shark. <laughs> <laughs> Selling seashells on the seashore. Um, yeah, it's actually... Uh, it, it, sharp or rough, or jacket, I suppose. Um, those were all synonyms for the uh, karch prefix on that first word and then uh, rightness is shark and then falciformis is sickle shaped or in the form of a sickle hmm. which I've seen a sickle and this uh, this shark ain't it <laughs> huh the communist Why? shark <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> the hammerhead and the sickle shark <laughs> yeah, you have a <laughs> One, one is war, and the other is agriculture. <laughs> um, but yeah, do you want to know what this guy looks like? I sure do. It's not like a sickle, or a communist, for that matter. Um, it looks like a typical reef shark. Uh, it has a slim, streamlined body, a smaller dorsal fin than a lot of other sharks, uh, a long snout long thin snout and a rel and relatively long pectoral fins not like crazy long but not like the thresher shark or anything like that but um they are uh they're, they're no slouches on the pectoral fin side they they definitely get work their pecs out um the they are counter shaded like a lot of sharks gray up top white underneath uh they have a large mouth full of up to 17 rows of sharp shark teeth uh, they also have a third set of eyelids called uh, nictitating membranes that close over their eyes for protection. Uh, and it's a pretty big shark overall. Uh, no, it's, it's no whale shark, but it's no like little baby sleeper shark. So how big is it, Joe? Let's talk about that. There, let's talk. Uh, welcome to the Love Measure Up segment. The official listener's favorite part of the show. The part of the show when we present the animal size and dimensions in relatable terms through a quiz that's fun for the whole family. It's also part of the show that's introduced by you when you send an audio result saying singing or making shark sounds. The words measure up into ldtaxonomy at gmail.com. Sharks say Don't chomp have... chomp. That's true. Because I, I have to have an answer for all animal sounds. Um, so, and Mason's very interested in sharks especially hammerhead sharks and they say chomp chomp they have to and what else are we gonna say glub glub <laughs> uh we don't have a new measure up intro this week but that means we get to hear from a shark oh lots of options here yeah oh wait i'm gonna guess is it bruce it ain't ah okay well maybe not it's shark tail you're not gonna do shark tail again no no it ain't all right Let's hear it. Street Sharks. Okay, um, let's get it. Watch an ad first. Street Sharks is a good option. And you, Save that for next time. You would lose me because I've never seen an episode of Street Sharks. I just had the toys. Without further ado, the listener's favorite part of the show. The customer. Okay. okay, but you realize that the underwear business is different than the t-shirt business is different, different than the, the sheet business. The sheet business. The thing is because when people come to me, they're usually <laughs> Do you know what, what did I is? just hear? Is that David Spade? <laughs> no, that is Shark Tank. Those were the sharks. Oh, uh, I see. <laughs> I have never seen an episode of Shark Tank either. <laughs> I've never seen a full episode of Shark Tank. I've just seen clips. I thought you were going to go with... Um, uh, what's his name? Tony from West Side Story? Nope. I don't think I've ever seen West Side Story. Well, he's in a, he's in a gang called the Sharks. I didn't workshop this at all. <laughs> Shark Tank was the first thing I thought of. The the first later, laterally Nemo thinking concept. Shark Tale. Yeah. 
Well, you would have gotten me with uh, the the West Side Story thing as well. So let's talk about length. They're between two point ten to two point seven meters, or six six point nine to seven feet. <laughs> what okay. A, what a small range. What a range. <laughs> Uh, how many silky sharks go into the length of the Silk Road? Oh. I feel like we've done the Silk Road before. Maybe. But uh, I typed it into the website and nothing came up. But no, what, what you need to do is go into your notes and type in, uh, yeah. go into your Google Docs and type in Silk Road and see if anything comes up. That's how I know if but I've already used the a term of venery is I'll type it in and see if it comes up on any of my notes. Um, All right. So here's a hint. The Silk Road was a Eurasian trade route that was used between the second century. The fr- what? Oh, the second century BC up until the mid 15th century. It was famously traveled by Marco Polo. And now it's just a place to uh, buy drugs. Online. Not the actual Silk Road. I think the Silk Road is just the moniker for the online illegal drug selling community. I think I want to read Marco Polo's diary after I get finished with John Patterson's. John Henry Patterson's. But the problem with Marco Polo's is that it is extremely unreliable. All the manuscripts are different. So the the fun thing about reading like the journal of someone from a long time ago is feeling like you're talking to someone from a from the past, but how much of it is fiction? True. Um, I'm gonna say five point two million sharks, silk sharks going to the Silk Road. I think the Silk Road is seven thousand miles long. Okay. How final is that answer? That is that that answer is as final as final can get. Okay, hold on a second. Let me just crunch some numbers. It the is a shark. So cr- cr- crunching is definitely on the on the table here. The correct answer is three million. Three million seventeen thousand one hundred and forty two. Well, I had the right number of digits. <laughs> the route had there, so the road is like there's several routes, including a maritime route, but ultimately it, it spanned forty six hundred kilometers or four thousand miles. Yeah, I was that's a seventy one percent on my part. No dice. And you could graduate high school, but you can't be a nurse. C's get degrees. Yeah. So let's talk about weight. 346 kilograms or 763 pounds. You always forget how big a fish is, how heavy they are. However, they can be because um, they're in suspended in underwater. Water. Yeah. How many silky sharks go into the amount of silk? Mulberry silkworms produce each year. And I'm talking about every mulberry silkworm, not an on the planet mulberry silkworm. Yeah. Well, mm. the ones accounted for. If they're like deep in the Chinese forest, then it's like, man, how do you know they didn't how many there are? The census, so Here's a hint. Mulberry silkworms are the larvae of domestic silk moths. They are native to northern China, Korea, and Japan. A single cocoon is made of a strand that is up to 900 meters long. But does not weigh a lot. All the silkworms in all the world, she should walk into mine. <laughs> I don't know. 
I'm not even, I'm, I can't even, like, begin to rationalize an answer here. So I'm going to say 10 million pounds. Yes. 10 million pounds. Let's put that in. <laughs> Ah, so my answer is 13,100 sharks go into the weight of all of the... And you said in a day or a year? No, in a year. In a year. I'm, I'm sticking with it. 13,100. Final answer? Yep. Yeah. The correct answer is 91,743 sharks. Got the right number of digits again. <laughs> they produce <laughs> 70 million pounds of silk annually. Wow. R ring around the mulberry silkworm bush. Because it's a bushel of seven, 70 million pounds. It is a little bit weird to think that, like, a silk shirt or silk sheet, are they're made out of... They pooped out by bu worms. Bug string. <laughs> <laughs> bug string, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, <laughs> uh, it, it's much more palatable to think, like, oh, this... Like, a, a sheep was also wearing this as a jacket. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is a sheep's clothes. That's all it is. Yeah. I have clothes now that came from... It was a hand me essentially a hand me down from it's, a sheep. It's a hand me down, and he can grow another shirt, and I can't. So I'm yeah, yeah. Well, so we can share. So yeah, you wouldn't steal a car. <laughs> <laughs> it's like downloading a downloaded. I downloaded that sheep shirt, and now I'm wearing it. But it, with silk, it's, it's like <laughs> I have to wear have to wear this product of bug of worm. A baby bug's house is what you're wearing when you're wearing a silk shirt. Yeah, if that house was like made out of spit or something. Yeah. Yeah. It's I mean, a I guess spit house. You just don't think too much about like what honey is. True. True. So you know, it's not. It's, it's definitely not the the weirdest relationship we have with insects. Uh, but that's all I've got. You all right. Anything big, quick before we get into something big? S something fast, you mean? Um, yeah. yeah. We call it fast facts. We used to call it general info. We used to have like rank and rank and title for this. Oh, that's right. Um, I mean, all of it is general info from the taxonomy down, but like, yeah, it is general info, major facts. Um, even though the well, gen general info is the the major category that includes the description, measure up, and yeah, that's what I'm saying, and and yeah, the taxonomy yeah. and everything. And generals outrank majors, so you know. Um, all right. So the silk shark lives all over the world, as long as the water is relatively warm. It prefers the open ocean and can dive out as far down as 1,600 feet in search of food. That is pretty far down um like many sharks he loves him some fish but will also eat squid nautilus and crabs pretty much anything small like if fish sized that swims also in the open ocean um several sharks might come together uh they're they're not very gregarious but they will sometimes work together to herd fish into a bait ball which is basically a large school of fish um, being pushed, being basically bullied up to the surface so that they have nowhere to go because it's the surface, um, and then just picking them off from there. Uh, they attack with a with a, a slashing um, attack with the side of sides of their mouths, which is probably where the sickle name came from because I guess that's how you would attack someone with a sickle. Never done it before. Don't plan on it. Um, but, uh, oftentimes when they in 
create one of these bait balls. They will take turns uh, uh, eating at the bait ball until all of it is gone. Um, like many sharks, they are oviviparous, which means um, unlike other fish where they will lay eggs outside of their body and then the male will fertilize them and they will develop and hatch completely outside of the uh, the fish's body. Uh, many sharks uh, house the, the embryo and the hatching happens inside of the mother's body. So it's it's very similar, at least ostensibly, to mammalian birth, live birth. Um, they are uh, actually sensitive to low frequency sounds, which they think is very similar to the sound of their prey. Um, but they've done some extensive studies with, um, you know, manufacturing these low frequency sounds and watching tracked sharks immediately start to like hone in on the sound and then by changing the frequency then the the sharks will turn around and go the opposite direction and so seeing their behavior as the frequency changes so they are sensitive to sound they have a bite force of 890 newtons which is pretty strong um and they don't really come into context in, into contact with humans at least because uh they live in the open ocean and humans there aren't a lot of them out there um, there have only been six reported attacks and none of them have been fatal. Uh, and that's all I got. So do you have any thing for us? Major, major fact, major. Yes. Corporal. Oh, I'm just a corporal um, now. I thought I was a, <laughs> I was a general in my home country. <laughs> uh, let's get into the major fact which i'm calling shark boy and lava girl uh so i was on something with my lava lamprey nickname uh-huh scientists went into a submarine volcano called caviche near that, the solomon islands that sounds familiar caviche ceviche yeah, maybe that's what I'm thinking of. <laughs> <laughs> Ceviche. Or Avicii, the... Uh, oh, yeah. Music the music man. <laughs> uh, there were supposed to... They were they were surprised. <laughs> uh, what I wrote is the uh, exact opposite of what I meant. I mean, they were surprised to find a thriving ecosystem living in the volcano including large animals in, like the silk shark. What I wrote was they were supposed to find thriving and a thriving ecosystem in the volcano. <laughs> and they did. Uh, so, they, they, so there's these animals living in the volcano. What's more surprising is that this volcano isn't dormant. In fact, it is one of the most active volcanoes in the Southwest Pacific Ocean. Mm. That means eruptions. That means volcanoes by Werner Herzog. It is, it is apocalyptic in this caldera. I don't know where I'm going to go when the volcano blows. And we don't know where they go either. So here, let's, we'll get into that. It, it also means that the water is pretty hot and extremely acidic. So when they say hot, it doesn't mean boiling. As it turns out, and I didn't know this until this researching for this episode, temperature drops really quickly as you get away from lava in the water. So when lava enters the water, when like a lava flow goes from land to the ocean, the water a few feet from the heat is only like 88 degrees Celsius or 190 degrees Fahrenheit. That like is a way too hot still. It's not comfortable. It's not cooking anything. I mean, maybe slow cooking for a long time. But, like, that's a few feet away from the lava. <laughs> slow slow cooking in a burning volcano. <laughs> it's my favorite that's John Mayer my, song. My favorite John Mayer song. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to say the same thing. Um, so, that's not, it's not cooking anything alive. 
but you'd think it would be act as an deter- a deterrent. Like I don't want to be in a really hot bath. So the acidity is more of a problem. Anyone that keeps a fish tank knows how delicately you need to manage the pH balance or else everything dies. But silk sharks, along with jellyfish and other species that's, uh, that live there, seem to be attracted to the vent despite near constant eruptions in unfavorable water conditions. So we aren't totally sure what happens to the sharks when the volcano blows. An article on snowbrains.com said it could be the case that they sense an imminent eruption and temporarily leave. Or perhaps the sharks blow up when the volcano does. (laughs) (laughs) We don't know. Uh, But there was an eruption in 2022, which is after we discovered that sharks were living there. So researchers scrambled the, 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 the boats to see the site and what was going on. They found temperatures 50 degrees warmer than usual, and the acidity was even more intense. But there were no sharks, and I assume no charred shark bits. Um, so it's a big mystery. Where do they go? How do they live there? How do they stand it? So my theory for where they go is charred is, shark tasty. That's my other. We question. we know <laughs> we know that sharks have this bilateral or this lateral line system, which is de- detects like faint movements in the water, and vibrations that help them find prey. So maybe seismic activity sends that lateral line system. In in off the charts, and it's just like, all right. It's time to move. It's time to get out of here. Um, okay. But I don't know. I haven't seen. I haven't seen anyone offering theories. But why do they live there? We aren't sure. But it's possible that the volcano ecosystem is centered around animals that thrive on geothermal uh, chemicals, sort of like those deep sea vents, where there's like a deep in the ocean. There's um, a thriving ecosystem that's living off of uh, geothermic activity and chemicals that are produced by these vents. Um, and when the so vent dies, there's... everything else dies. Uh huh. So when a when these smaller things are attracted to this geothermic activity, then the bigger and the bigger and the bigger thing comes. So the sharks may be attracted to. Prey that thrives on volcanic activity or prey that thrives on prey that thrives on volcanic activity. So there's, there's plenty, plenty of nutrients to go around. But yeah, imagine being a scientist and like, let's look in this volcano and finding a shark in it. In fact, there were two sharks, two species of sharks. The sickle shark and guess what else? The hammerhead shark. Ah! This is a Kami volcano. It's the red lava. menace is lava. It's the red <laughs> men- <laughs> it was lava all along. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Maybe that's why they call it the silky shark instead of the sickle shark. They're just tired of this dumb joke. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that's another, another topical in the news animal fact. They just keep finding cool stuff. As long as they keep doing that, we'll keep, we'll, we'll be, uh, we'll, we have job security. Yeah, we should find some cool stuff. We should. I, then we, we can use our Patreon money to buy one of those James Cameron submarines. Uh Uh-huh. Or we can invest uh, in one single minority share in one of James Cameron's submarines. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, but that's all I got for that. All right, that's all I got. Uh, that's the the silky shark. So if you're out there in Podcastia, dive down to the depths. Take a bite out of the nearest bait ball. 
and set your base up next to a volcano like the supervillain Silk Shark here in Life, Death, and Taxonomy. Hey Taxonomy Titans, I just want to remind you that we now have a Patreon. Patrons can see full video episodes and get shoutouts on the show. But ultimately, it's a way for you to help us cover some costs and get even better. Still, reviews are the best way to help us grow. So if you haven't left one yet, we'd really love to hear from you. As always, thanks for listening and engaging. podcast <laughs> I have never seen a Werner Herzog movie in my life and it doesn't sound like it's 